Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video we're going to be taking a look at DigitalOcean versus AWS and other cloud hosting providers in the same space. So the idea is that uh, cloud hosting providers more or less kind of work in the same way, expose you with the same features and all that stuff, but there are quite some differences between one another which I'm going to highlight in this video. I've used AWS and DigitalOcean both to a lot of great extent and uh, basically I know um, the things I'll be saying are true at least for my experience. So the first thing is that AWS and uh, I would say a lot of other cloud providers have a lot and lot of more features than DigitalOcean alone. Right, so one of the things which might bother you if you're opting in for DigitalOcean is that it does not have those many features inside of a cloud provider, right? Now, I know that uh, uh, DigitalOcean sells itself as an infrastructure as a service and what you would expect is that, you know, just give us the infrastructure and we're going to set it all up ourselves. But a lot of times it is very, very handy when services like, you know, DigitalOcean Spaces, whose equivalent is S3 on AWS. And, uh, you know, for example, on AWS, you have simple email service, which allows you to send emails to a lot of people um, using the AWS backend. So stuff like this is kind of missing from DigitalOcean, right? If you see the services offered by AWS are huge. AWS offers a lot of services. Similarly, Google Cloud offers a lot of services as well. Azure offers them as well. So that's one point in favor of other other cloud providers which are not DigitalOcean. For DigitalOcean, however, I would say the best thing is that it keeps its list of features short and the most used one. You're going to see that you have so many features right here, but you are probably not going to use um, I would say 98% or 95% of the features listed here, right? So you might not even ever need to use, for example, like the media services of AWS if you are not into the video business, right? If you are not into, let's say, uh, if you do not want to use machine learning in your application, you're going to not use this whole section right here, right? So there's that. So AWS offers you a ton of features on the on the first hand, but you might not even use most of them. Secondly, AWS is is categorized as one of the uh, most difficult user interfaces to be to use inside of a cloud environment. Now I somewhat agree with the statement, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can get a hang of AWS if you start using it, if you get to, you know, just just keep working it for a couple of weeks or more. You're going to get under you're going to understand how everything works in AWS dashboard. But yeah, for beginners, if you're just starting out inside the cloud journey, it might be a little bit daunting to see all those all those gears and check boxes and, uh, you know, just fine tuning so much. DigitalOcean allows you to basically have a very clean and sleek interface for everything. And uh, yeah, in a few steps, you can just get started with complicated features like launching your own server on the cloud um, in just two or three steps. So DigitalOcean earns this point. The other thing which I like the most about DigitalOcean is its upfront pricing. So you see that although DigitalOcean is a cloud-based provider, it actually provides you the correct and clean upfront pricing cost, right? It is a nightmare to calculate pricing in AWS correctly. Now, you might redirect me to a couple of pages, you know, just look at that, look at there, and I might agree, but AWS comes with a lot of small cost here and there as well, especially with the data transfer. So AWS has all sorts of costs for all sorts of countries. For example, if your visitor is coming from India and you're using CloudFront, you're going to be charged more. If the visitor is from US, you're going to be charged less. Um, you know, if uh, you're hosting your S3 bucket on in some one region and uh, CloudFront is front of it, then you might be charged if, uh, just like I said, if, if the uh, country of the user is 
different, right? Depending on the country. Um, similarly, there are a lot of other hidden costs as well inside the AWS infrastructure, right? Mostly revolving around data transfer. That is what I have experienced. So that is not really predictable. So yeah, and in fact, there's cost for IO as well if you're using EC2, so you cannot have a lot of input output on your instance. So there are costs like these. On DigitalOcean, it's pretty straightforward, which they say to you, it's a $5 per month instance. You get a one GB RAM, one CPU, which is shared, 25 GB hard disk, and a one TB of transfer for free, right? So this package includes something which I believe 90% of the internet who wants to host small websites would be sufficient. Maybe your personal blog, which gets, I don't know, let's say maybe two to 3000 visits a month. That, that This is like a perfect solution for you, right? And uh, yeah, even the charges for exceeding the transfer are also listed very clearly, which we'll get on in later videos. But yeah, that's, that's the idea that DigitalOcean puts pricing in a very fair and clear way. And I would say that DigitalOcean in a lot of cases actually beats AWS pricing as well by a margin, a lot, a lot of margin, I would say. So AWS, everybody knows that AWS has a ridiculous model of data transfer pricing. In fact, Zoom even bailed out of AWS just because of the high, huge data transfer pricing and they just went to Oracle for that part. But yeah, I mean, this is like one of the things which bothers me about AWS is the data transfer pricing is very high. So yeah, DigitalOcean has a very convenient data transfer pricing. You can see that for the $5 per month instance, you get a one TB data transfer just on the house. So there's that. A one TB data transfer on AWS would easily cost you around $70 to $100 a month. So, you know, you are saving some money here with DigitalOcean. So yeah, I mean, more or less, these are the few things just to summarize, DigitalOcean has very few features compared to AWS or Google Cloud, but those few features are very, very useful and 99% of the times you're gonna need only those few. So you can live with that in a lot of cases. Number two is that the pricing model of DigitalOcean is much cleaner and much cheaper in a lot of cases than its competitors, right? Specifically AWS. Number three, I cannot think of anything else, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's that. DigitalOcean, I don't have a lot of quality problem with DigitalOcean, not really a lot of downtime, I won't say that. Servers are top class, the network speed is good. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a top class company offering a cheap price for good instance hardware. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain about DigitalOcean hardware as, at all because I have been running DigitalOcean myself for a couple of years now almost and yeah there have been some complaints in some areas which I'll get to as we create this content but yeah more or less my experience has been good so yeah that's that's basically it for this video and if you haven't signed up for DigitalOcean account just go ahead and sign up using the link below and once you do that we can start with our journey at DigitalOcean so that's all for this video I'm going to see you very quickly in the next one.